Oh, here we go. Absolutely wonderful. They're not doing double Sam. I'm so sad. <laughs> they have gone back. That's actually HD kind clutch. of criminal. All right, where's, where's my picks and bands today. music? Here we go. Here we go. Mercury? Oh, bro. There, there's something's going on in scrims, bro. Something wild going on in scrims. Well, even streaming. Um, I don't think he is. He is. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually gonna pull it up so I can give him some viewers too. Exactly. Both here and streams up. Why don't I see him? Did he just go live? Call, I don't know, see him. Call what legacy. Very refreshing. I not follow him. I swear I follow him. Here, I'll link you it. Okay, there it is. Oh, you found it. Right, Polly. Oh, I don't follow him. Unlucky. <sighs> okay. You just started a stream? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, I need to move myself. Okay, so picks and bans. Rav Kali Nike. Cardwell has been an insane Nike so far. So getting that off the table makes sense. Rav, obviously OP. So f banning it away from yourself in the first ban doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you can't play it, I guess. And it's a Thor lock in for what is likely to be the jungle. Could be a flex pick, obviously. But uh, yeah, right now it's just a Thor first overall, which is very surprising. What is also surprising is a Ganesh second overall for the Wailing Banshees and a Hell to go with it. Interesting. Hell is Hell second is a little crazy. We'll see how it works, I guess. Tom yeah. Likes it. it does reveal that. Well, no. Oh, I, wait, no, it's mid. That's mid, what? Yeah, it's going to be mid for Krojiro. He has played it a couple times, actually. It they does. It does reveal mm -hmm. the hand of like, oh, like, uh, we're gonna, like, lock these two gods away. But it is the Hachiman takeaway instead. And wonder if the Hell Hover was a shot at Storm's God Pool. You know, you pick the Ganesha away from him, and now what's he gonna go to? Is it probably the Hell potentially? Marty, I'm actually shocked that Marty gets through to like the next phase of picks. Here, the pick isn't bad. Yeah, I think it's more so a takeaway from Storm rather than like a pick for yourself personally, because Storm has been just spamming that god. And Marty gets through like past that is kind of crazy. Like, I'm shocked he wasn't first picked. I'm shocked he wasn't second picked by the Wailing Banshees. That kind of tells you that they don't want to look at that character, really. So, A. Garrett has his pick. This should be a support or solo pick. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see Clutch go for Horus. Agreed, the god is Mickey, though. Who, Ganesh? Probably. Ganesh is a little Mickey, but... It's support, man. The whole role is Mickey. Let's be honest. True. You don't play Aries, bro. You're playing Mickey. Jormungandr. Yeah, this is kind of a crazy top three for uh, the crew so far. Uh, yeah, the crew kind of diffing him in the draft right now. Yeah, I almost wonder if they kind of focus too much on taking gods away from uh, the crew that the Wailing Banshees don't have much of a comp for themselves so far. I mean, if Crow plays the hell, which he does, like, hell's still good here because they'll have sustain into hunters, so they won't 
I mean, was, I'm assuming it's gonna be double hunter, so they'll have sustain and double hunter, and they'll have like good counter dive with the hell and the Ganesh. I think they should go hell here. It, That's it, gonna be the, the the Snick Seuss. Kind of makes sense. It's a good pick for him. It's got he performed on quite well recently, and uh, we'll go for that yet again. It might ban. The other team might ban out hell here unless they want it. But their first pick. No, the other team's first pick, so I feel like they should ban Hell. If they, if they know Crow plays it. Also just realized they're playing with a uh, Sparta ADC today for Banshees. They don't have, um, who is it, Armor Wolf, I think? Oh, they do not have Armor Wolf. That's going to be a big deal, I feel like. Two IC is okay, but it is a step down from Armor. Yeah, with Drunk on the rise, I feel like... Just taking away armor wolf probably doesn't. Good, it doesn't benefit you. Ah, there's the uh, the drunk diplomat ban. Drunk has to go for a god other than Hachi and Rama, the two gods I've only ever seen him play recently. So, what is Drunk's third pick? This guy's ball cooks this draft for them because they have good double dive with it. We're turning out the lights. It's really good agreed the disco pick is really good here like this is a this is so much aoe space control with the what the wailing banshees have gone for here so you need either a carry or a mid and then you need a support here both of them are kind of limited on what they can go for it is going to be the Marty ADC, which doesn't surprise me. And then the Yamoja gets through to the ninth pick overall is very interesting. Very good into this composition as well. And Kukulin. Uh, yep. I should have saw that one coming. He plays Nike and he plays, then if Nike's out, he plays Kukulin. Yeah, I mean, with, no one wants to ban Kukulin, so. with Nike being taken away in the top three, I'm surprised Kukulin wasn't the second, you know, ban here. Instead, it was the Yanis Agni. So, very interesting to say the least. I think you're just willing to live with Kukulin, but it is like he's only played like two gods all season, I think. Yep. I might try and see what else he could play. I have to go look at my... Don't quote me on that, but I think he's only played two. Personally, big fan of the cruise draft a little more compared to Wailing Banshees. I think the Banshees have like a good identity of what they want to do, but I just feel like the crew is a lot more cut and dry on how they want to play the map and how they want to play the game. We should win the lane matchup though. Surprised they didn't ban it. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they didn't ban it too. So we do get into this game. This should be fun. I mean, this is a very important set. So this should be a lot of fun. Hey, SB, how was the set today? Uh, we won 2-1. It was a very... I would say, I would personally say a very easy set, but... I know Squoosh may not agree with me on that one. It's all good. It was a clean, clean win. Uh, it was a 2-1. Uh, I got to play Jormungandr ADC, which was fun. Uh, unfortunately, that was the game we lost, so I'll never get to play Yormungandr ADC again, but, you know, it's what it is. Right, so we are in a, a current pause right now, but this gives me the perfect opportunity to load everyone into where they need to be. My pause leak? It's my pause leak, it's my pause leak, but, you know. If you're gonna get into game, might as well make sure it's everything is set up right. Uh, we're actually gonna move down here. Okay. 
Oh yeah, down here maybe is better. Let's see what's... Oh, we need to see relics, hang on. Maybe tiny. We're good? Yeah, we're good. So remake armor showed up. Okay. That changes the tides of things a little bit, I'd say. That's not right. Don't think that's a valid command. Have I missed anything? No. So basically we were going to get into game number one and then uh, Wailing Banshees had a sub Tootsie playing ADC instead of Armor Wolf and then they had to remake game one because Tootsie showed up or Armor Wolf showed up, showed, showed up excuse me. So you have missed nothing except the picks and bans obviously for game one. But besides that nothing else. Oh, uh, this should be a good game, I think. This is between the top two teams of the other division, aside from our own. So we're really excited to see who's playing and how they play. I feel like Crew 2-0? I think it depends. I feel like Crew can... Take game one with this comp, but I don't know, man. You can't count out the Snicks, Susano. Guy is a demon. Cardwell gets one of his two picks. Krojiro's on a very good space control mage. Same with uh, Dummy Slick. He's on a very easy support. As we get set for our game number one. Of the OSL... What is it? Because of crew roster... What's wrong with the crew roster? Just didn't realize Sam isn't playing. Sam is playing though. Sam is literally in solo right now. Uh, what do we want to sit on? Player damage? XP per minute? At birth. Should have traded for other Sam and started Sam. Sam is still on the roster, so they can always start Sam whenever they want. But right now they're starting Sam. <laughs> uh, lanes to watch. Honestly, it's 
it's got to be probably the jungles, to be honest, in my opinion. Bingus has been, you know, up and coming in the jungle role recently. Uh, Snix has consistently been like a powerhouse for this team. And just, you know, running it down and making making stuff happen. So I think uh, it's going to be the jungles that really make the difference. Standard starts for both teams. Nothing too crazy out of whack so far. I think the biggest thing to talk about will be what Cardwell decides to build this Druid Stone into. But right now, it's going to be standard starts for both sides. Though A. Garrett does an interesting start going into what I assume is a Deso first overall. Kind of a little surprising considering uh, we've been seeing lots of, you know, coin in the mid lane right now. He's just going to elect to the try and true Deso start more than likely. Carl's probably going to, for binding. I don't really know what else you would, you know, I don't think you rush Druid. And, you don't uh, think you rush Arch Druid? I don't think you rush Arch Druid in solo lane. He might. Binding is just more effective damage. <laughs> Whereas Druid, you oh. have to every once in a while. in a lot of trouble. Snick's going to look for that. Doesn't have the damage. Now it's... Snix who could be in trouble. The double tap is strong. Bingus with the first blood on Snix. That wall as well. And Discordia is in a lot of trouble. The burn will not come through, however. Crozura will walk away. But that's first blood. Goes to Bingus. He's looking for the hammer. Not going to find it. But that will once that was, again be first that was blood. Clean. He freehanded that man, bro. <laughs> Finds the double tap and goes in with the barrage. And Crozura still in a lot of trouble. The wall has to be. It's Crozura. Flames are good, and that's second blood. The boys of the crew are on the board, and they're going to continue their performance as Snix looks for a Garrett, but will not get it. Very safe. And, you know, that's uh, Thor off to a 2-0 start, you know, not even two minutes into the game. Very good look for a, a pace-setting jungler like this on the Thor, so that's going to be huge. It's gonna... really good too, because Snix has probably undoubtedly been the best jungler this season, and having a good start against him will help this team. Oh. and I don't know how you spell banshees. Good enough. Okay. Oh, how did I toggle that? Ah, this is like the worst part about... Okay, there we go, we fixed it. The worst part about that is when you're typing in that and then it changes your keybinds. Uh... Oh, Snix over here doesn't get the blue buff and now a Garrett is here, gonna pull him back in. But it'll be all right. But an unsuccessful blue buff and Snix is very behind Bingus right now who is just... To a great start on this Thor. Should be interesting though, and Cardwell hits five first. Nothing too crazy, obviously, but he's just been allowed to solo farm over here. Roll back and TV back in. Uh, I'll be right back. Mount my Sparta team do pick some bands. All good. I'm just looking to hit five here and probably use that ultimate. Bingus also level five, looking to get active as quickly as he can on this Thor. Oh, here we go. Looking for Krojiro under tower. Is he going to find it? Yes, he will. And that's a third for Bingus on this Thor so far. Krojiro just under the tower trying to clear that green buff and way too low against the Thor. Can never be doing that. Left hand side, Hachiman and... A decent amount of trouble because that's the river's rebuke from Yamoja, but that'll be all. Armor uses the beads. And that's that. So it's a, a pretty scrappy early game so far as Snix again has to back to base. Just falling so far behind to, Kroj uh, to Bingus here on the left hand side now. As he's looking to just secure more of these mid harpies in this neutral objective. He's just off to a good start. Nah. 
Is Nate Garrett dead here? He might be. That's a good pull. Beads are too late and Snix is on the board. How was y'all's game one, by the way? You, uh, I saw game two and three. Game one was pretty easy, actually. Game one was probably the easiest game for us out of the, the three, for sure. But yeah, we tried some things. You thought I thought game, I think game three was easier than game one. I would disagree. I think game one we just grabbed it early and we never lost control of it. Like there was never a point in game one where we were like behind. It seemed hard at certain spots. Yeah, there were definitely times where game three was losable for sure. Like they were literally on our Titan, I'm pretty sure. Or was that game two? I can't remember. I think that was game three. I can't remember. But anyways, no, that was game two. Ingus, he's looking. Can he find it? Does have ultimate available. Is he going to go up? He is going to go up in a second now. He's just kind of keeping good vision on everyone else. Six could look here. It's a 3v2 advantage, but he's just going to focus on the, the neutral farm. So I got to play Atlas. That's fair. It was a bit scrappy here in mid. Rivers Rebuke came out as well, and Discordia Crozier is dead again. It's 0-3 on the Discordia so far. Seven minutes in. And now Ganesh will likely fall as well. Maybe not. A little bit healthy. That shell came in clutch there. As the goon squad are on their way. Snicks and Cardwell rotating to mid. Seeing if they can catch I Garrett. Oh no! Dummy Slick does not connect with that ultimate. But Six Snicks will be hunting for that kill and he finds it with the ultimate. Yormagunder has arrived. Hunting down the Ganesh. No HP on him. No dash available. Cardwell trying to zone out. I Garrett. Good ultimate, and that forces the beads, and Discordia is back, and Cardwell, he's about to go guy form. He's going to tank the tower. Snix gets that one. Wailing Banshee's fighting back. Not bad. Not bad at all, but Cardwell in a lot of trouble now. Good apple to keep him alive. Clutch doesn't have the ultimate to try and get that kill. Drunk is going to try and get that back off as quickly as he can. He's going to try and also solo out Armor Wolf, but Snix is here now. Doesn't hit the two, but it doesn't matter. Drunk is dead. Baited out by Armor Wolf. And suddenly, Wailing Banshees are right back into this game. Holy cow. What? A game. And this is just going to be what it is. It's just going to be very scrappy, I'm, I imagine. Just them fighting back and forth. You made it so Rad can play. Oh, Radzor can play the game? Let's go. That's what we've been talking about this whole time behind the scenes. Is Can Radzor have someone set up for him? If Drew's Food does exactly that, that would be nice. And Valve got to play? Huge. how to play smite too so that was cool oh damn you know that just kind of happens with swagga i find he just kind of forgets how to play the video game and just runs it down well we're about the 10 minute mark it's five to four 
Bingus. Bingus is going up. He lands on Krojiro. Actually, he doesn't. The dash was just in time. The golden apple on to Thor. No further follow-up damage as the shell comes through. That's ult for ult as a great wall keeps Snicks from engaging the pool on Yemo, but I think that will be all. What a game. Just the, it's just this mid 3v3 just fighting constantly as Hachiman is autoing the wrong way. Whoops. Snake's got a flank and he still has ultimate available. Bingus does not. This is a huge flank. If they get a really good two, the hammer in. Beads were a little late. Another shell and Merlin is toast. Bingus is toast. And the Wailing Banshees are online all of a sudden. What a great play from them. I don't know how much longer I can keep casting, though, I will say. My voice is kind of gone after earlier today. Man, I, I was talking about how, like, Bingus was, like, kind of, like, carrying, like, the crew in the early game and whatnot. As our wolf just secures that one. Is there's another fight for this blue buff? Oh. They steal it away. River's rebuke, but Seuss gets out just in time. That's big. Cardwell may not. He's actually pretty... He's going to transform into Guy Form, and this could be a good opportunity to make sure he gets out. Bingus is going to go up into the sky. Snix does have Blink. Will use it to get away. Cardwell still able to get away. One more shot, and the wall will do it. It's a Phantom Shell upgrade, but Cardwell goes the wrong way. Cardwell does die after all that. Pretty crazy game so far. Aye, aye. That was a really good flank. It was a really good flank in mid. As it's a 1v1 to try and get this right now. The TP comes in from Cardwell, and they are here to defend this. Cardwell has no rage form right now, and Jormungandr is here as well. Armor Wolf is on his way, but Drunk is also here. It's going to be a full 5 on 5 at the 12, 12 minute mark. And I don't think the Wailing Banshees can really step up. There is too much AoE zone control. From the crew. They got the, the Marty, the Merlin, and the Jormungandr. And it's also a Gold Fury pull. This is very surprising, but Snix did back. And so far, there is no response from the Wailing Banshees just yet. Cardwell is on his way around the back. The gold is dropped. Here comes the Dark Pillars more than likely. Dummy Slick starts the fight and Yemo gets hit by that golden apple. Armor Wolf cleans that up. Clutch now onto the back line, gets rooted. Bingus doesn't hit the ultimate and that's a very big deal as Clutch falls first. Bingus is next on the chopping block and Marty just has to fly away to safety, but it's not gonna matter. He has to beads his way out, but Snick's still on him. Armor Wolf claims that one and suddenly just like that, the Wailing Banshees get four for zero and now a Gold Fury as well. They lose the beacon, but it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all that they lose the beacon because they are there with the fight. Clutch is on his own in the back trying to dive. Krojiro there with some amazing cooldown usage. Armor Wolf just pumping out the damage. This Hachiman's only got one or two items. And he's getting all the kills. He's 2-0 right now after that fight. But Snix yet again just making the impact and Dummy Slick starting off that fight. Oh, what a fight. So tempo in advantage for Wailing Banshees. Can they keep it up after all that? We'll have to wait and see. Favorite looking at the compositions both do decently well going into the mid to late game. So it really is going to be It's gonna be interesting and Snicks after all that has amassed himself a two level lead. He's six in one on the Sasana right now Bingus just hasn't been landing these impactful ultimates
Oh, good wall. Bingus gets the double tap, and Snix is still looking for more. He has to be a little careful. He's taking a lot of damage. Get a lot of value out of his ultimates. Ganesha can just spam and drop his and get value. This is true. Storm has to make the impact. Or it's back to the drawing board, because so far this Yemo has not made the impact. That is for sure. Storm... If Storm puts himself at the top of the uh, top of the tier list, you know it's just clear bias after this week. Because he has not had the performance 15 minutes into this game so far. Done very little on this Yamoja, one of the best characters in the game still after all those nerfs. Oh, Yorm goes into the air. Ancha's just the lone Ganesh, but the dive onto Yamoja! That's a support, but it doesn't seem to matter. Snix cleans that one. Cardwell will likely trade his life here. Bingus caught, but is able to escape. Good wall, but that will be all. Low health bars on both sides. Snix still hunting for more into deep into the right-hand side jungle. And does not get spotted by the Thor. Oh, now suddenly he's spotted. There's the hammer. Doesn't land. Good blink usage. Snix at the 1v1. Now thinking a 2v1 is Krojiro gets that one and now Krojira has to Aegis away to safety Snick's gonna leave his mid laner to die because his mid laner is all but dead but it's Wailing Banshees who get the Pyromancer and they're looking for more as Merlin kind of low HP but I don't know how much further you can go here as Storm is shown back up but the TP comes in from Cardwell will he get off in time no he will not Storm's auto attacks are there to stop Cardwell from TPing in but he will TP back in anyways and this fight is still going on. There's no objectives outside of Fire Giant, but Cardwell TPs in in case the fight keeps on going on. Somebody followed and I missed it. I apologize. Thank you so much for the follow person. I Was it Ionized? Ionized, did you follow me? <clears throat> is that who it was? Ionized, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated, I assume. Unless I'm incorrect. In which case, whoever did it, thank you for the follow. So it's an interesting game so far. But it has been the Wailing Banshees who have come up out on top so far. Nothing game-breaking just yet. The crew are right back in it still after one good fight, potentially. But it really just has been the Wailing Banshees who have been on the front foot. And I'd argue, based off of the compositions, it's the crew who have the better comp. You got Marty, Yamoja, Thor, and Jormungandr. Some of the top picks in their respective roles right now. And it's the composition of Kakulin, Seuss, Discordia, Ganesha, Hachiman. All decent picks in their roles, but definitely, you know, some arguably for top, but nothing crazy. And the Wailing Banshees are just making it happen. All throughout this game, they have fought tooth and nail to scrap their lead. And it's an 1830 beacon spawn as Cardwell will be on his way. Does not have TP available. Snix not able to get out. Is able to get out with the... I don't, I don't know how he got out of that, but sure enough, he did. Thor Aegis is nothing. Bingus, not a good look. How does Snix get out of that? That... That must have just been a bad Yamoja 3 or something because he he slips right through and escapes on by. The beacon will likely go the way of the Wailing Banshees. Oh, it's one tick away. The fight will break out. Cardwell going in. Good Darmic Pillars. Merlin and Marty are on their own to try and deal with this. Bingus misses again with that ultimate. Again. And Jormungandr he gets hit by the Golden Apple. He's 1 HP. It is just a fight for this beacon. But Cardwell zoning four members on this right-hand side. He should die, but he may not. Bingus falls. It's a great shell from Dummy Slick to get out his soul laner. And now Wailing Banshees are pushing down mid. They're looking for the T1. Snix is still hovering in the backside. And the chase is on. Armor Wolf shoves them back. No minions to get this tier one. Armor Wolf might actually fall here if... Hey, Garrett does have the damage. He does. Snicks also in no man's land. Kind of caught deep, but looks for Drunk. Finds him. 
And once again, the Wailing Banshees come out on top. ADC gone, and that might be a big deal. You might not be able to get this Gold Fury anymore, but Snix, he's on the hunt, looking for Merlin, potentially, as the TP from Jormungandr comes back in, and now you have to pay respect here with the Gold Fury. You cannot do it with the, the rest of the members still nearby. He didn't miss. He just hit it on the pillar to put himself at a disadvantage. Yeah, that is exactly what happened. <clears throat> Man, what a great showing. As Cardwell, he's going to turn into guy form. He's actually going to look straight for a Garrett. Does not land the root. That might be a little spooky with the Gold Fury still up and Jormungandr spitting. On the mid as Snix gets walled. No HP. Good root. Good blind root from Crozero to keep his jungler alive as now it's the crew who have their health bars. Health bar advantage to look towards this Gold Fury. They will pull it. It's just Dummy Slick and it's just Armor Wolf. Can they make something happen? Probably not. Darmic Pillars is available in the silence. Will come through the crew to secure it. Gold Fury goes towards the crew. So it is a bite back. And look at this graph, man. It is it is up and down, but it is in the advantage of the Wailing Banshee still. But you can see that slight spike back up. It's only 3k in the, in the hands of the Wailing Banshees. That is a lead you can fight into. The lead you might not be able to fight into is Snix versus Bingus, and it is level 19 to level 15 Thor. Oh my, I left when Bingus was 2-0, and I come back and Snix was 9-1. <laughs> oh yep. my. Oh. Ah, uh, missing the fight. Fight breaks out. I was looking at my phone. Snix gets a two-man knockup. The crew get the Pyromancer. But Snix is hunting. Looking for the Merlin. Doesn't find it. Cardwell does get Storm. And Thor is alone in the back. Looking for any potential picks. He's not going to be able to find it. And will likely go down here. Two dead. On the side of the crew. And who was it in the chat that said 2-0 for the crew? Should more than likely be the case. As Wailing Banshees. Putting that down with such ease as Snix once again looking for anything he can, blinks in, doesn't find it as this fire giant will be started. Ah, my phone! I dropped it! Fire giant low. I mean, it's, it's just a huge zone here. I might get it. Oh, he might actually. He's looking for it. He's got the potential. No, he does not. And oh, the goose will close. goose his way out of there. You changed your opinion once you saw the roster. What do you think this is? A democracy? You can't just do that. You can't just change your opinion. Oh, wait, so he, you know, if he thought it was double Sam, I agree. I, I thought they'd win if they had double Sam, but they didn't have double Sam. Bro, my phone disappeared into the darkness. It is gone. It fell at my feet and it is gone. How did it get over there? You like what you see? You like what you see? All right. Chat, do we think this is game? Do we think this fired push is game? It's 24 minutes in, 17 to nine. Wailing Banshees are just kind of all over them as Snix looking for a Garrett. Kinda on his own, good teleport to get on out. And Bingus does not land the ultimate, does land the, ha the wall. The damage is there and Snix does fall. Can they get back in time? Jormungandr trying to stall here. Keeping our wolf at bay. He goes up into the ultimate just to buy some time. This might be a throw by the Wailing Banshees. Bad ultimate from Storm. But it does find Ganesh and keep him locked in place. Good Dark McPillars to keep him alive though. And Vegas gets turned on as well. Just like that. Dummy Slick does fall. But the turnaround and the damage is there. Armor Wolf and Krojiro pumping out the damage. HD Clutch falls as well. It's a two for two overall. But the Phoenix does stand. That's what matters at the end of the day. 
but Wailing Banshees continue to build their lead. It is just a constant, constant stream upward in their trajectory. They have done an amazing job so far. Snix not having beads there was on Fort. This is true. Snix does fall there and maybe that's a little troll from Snix in his positioning with no relics there. So good attention to the crew to tr find that pick ultimate overall and uh, come out on top. And the crew kind of giving this Gold Fury up. I'm a little surprised with Beacon and Gold Fury up that they are just like not stepping up. Storm has arrived and so is A. Garrett. Can A. Garrett steal this away? So close but not able to get it. And it seems like the crew, despite having level 20 on their mid, don't have level 20 on any other member on their team so far. So they might just decide to elect to farm it out, split the map up, send someone left because fire is not up for a hot minute here. Titans will be spawning in the right hand lane in any minute now. For now, it is just a defense in mid as this tower will also fall. Aye, aye, aye. He lives for five seconds longer. They get the bird. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it probably is true for five seconds because five seconds is a lot of time in retrospect. It just doesn't feel that way, but. Yeah, it's possible. If they do. They do, do they not overstay? That's an, that's an awful sentence to try and read. Right hand tower is down. Titans are available. Yorm was the only person to defend. They committed a lot of people to him. Yeah, but Yorm can kind of just ult and then just like fuck with your damage. You know what I mean? He's just knocking up your carries and you really don't want to be beating a Yorm ultimate. It kind of feels really bad. So, I mean, it, it is kind of like, it is kind of hit or miss, I think a little bit because Yorm can stall for a hot minute and then you'll have members able to show up. So it is hit or miss in my eyes. So fire still not available, but we're just not going to group on push on this Titan. A little surprised, but fire has run out on all of the members from having damage to being knocked up like three times in a row. This is true. And that that for a bird feels terrible. Yes, exactly. So you really don't want to be doing that in my eyes. Uh, we can take a look at damage actually. Cardwell at top, which is a little surprising, but not really surprising as Cardwell has constantly been just fighting most of this game. A Garrett up there has been, you know, he's been really impressive, I think, this game as well. So seeing the Merlin up there is pretty cool as Bingus hunting here for the Hachi men. Hachi has relics, yes. And you can see Dummy Slick on his way. Armor Wolf running away from his support, and that's not a good sign. Maybe they just didn't know. Hachi does use the beads to get away. And that's all Bingus wanted. Level 20 on this Thor now could be a big deal. Looking to farm for that starter item and does have a, a potential target as well in this next firefight. For a not guaranteed bird feels terrible. Yes, that is true. I think if it's guaranteed bird, maybe it's not bad, but like the fact that it wasn't guaranteed. Gormagunder could be in a lot of trouble here. Clutch probably going to have to use that ultimate. He uses the three instead. Just gets into that ultimate form. To safety and that should be a fire giant pull for the wailing banshees no instead they're just gonna set up an ambush in the jungle make a bit of noise around the objective they're slow to start this very slow to start was finally cardwell pulls that's a full commit onto the objective so far storm does have that ultimate available and they don't know hp yet bingus has arrived he still doesn't know hp yet and it will just go to the wailing banshees And not even try to contest it. They're just they're just too late. Storm is playing too scared to step up there. Not sure how nobody was there. Uh but but Glarky, don't you know that Storm is a top level support in, in the league? He is the best support in the league, man. 
And as a frontliner, it's not his job to go step up there at all. But as a top level support, uh, he knows that. In all seriousness, no, uh, Wailing Banshees just play that really well. They just stick it, even though members are showing up. They're really slow to get there, and they just decide to stick it. Good call by them. Items are being finished. Builds are being finished for the Wailing Banshees. It is a uh, it is a tough one for the crew to come back here. Just just a few items that need to be finished. You know, the Marty just needs to finish that Heartseeker. The A. Garrett has finished the build. Dormagutter is still a full item away. Bingus is still a full item away. Does have starter upgraded. Clutch does not have that starter upgraded, which in my opinion is a big deal here so far. Even though there is no real like anti -he like healing on the other side, I, th I think I'm actually a little surprised at the tainted in general. There's no real like healing on the other side. I get it's like good. It's actually pretty decent on Yorm, but like why not like, I don't know, just another starter item that you can make use of. It's kind of surprising. Had a fight changing alt yet? No, he is not. And and that's kind of why you're picking Yemo is you are just picking her for that big ultimate. So I'm I'm a little disappointed in Storm's performance so far on this on this pick. But one of his picks was taken away. I think another of his picks were taken away. I mean Storm is in my opinion just a bit of a Ganesh one trick. That's how they've been. Cardwell misses the bomb. Cardwell missed the bomb and will get punished for it a fair bit. Does have TP to get himself back into play, but. This is not an EFG, it is only a regular fire giant. For the boys in red. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for them to do this. Shield stacking with mitigation or defense character is good. This is true. It's gonna be a tough one to get through. I'm not sure if Wheeling Banshees can really do this. I think Cardwell did have the the potential to break the base, but will not do it. He now goes in. The ult from Storm does cut off the rest of the members, but it's Ganesh who's tanking instead of Cardwell, and that's a big deal. Cardwell still on the backside looking for Martikaris, but doesn't find it. Clutch is dead. Good wall, but that's not going to matter as now Yamoja's in trouble. Gets locked in place. Storm will die. Armor Wolf. No, Snix finds Bingus, and Snix is still hunting for more. He's not going to find it. Just the two lone carries for the crew left remaining. Health bars are low for the Wailing Banshees, and they're going to turn their attention towards this mid lane instead. They will find that. It might be a little risky to go for this right tier, or this right Phoenix. The health bars are very low. Fire not on for much longer. That ult was so bait. Yes. Had much of an effect on the game as Ganesh. Yeah, but so here's the problem is the crew top picked Thor and then uh, Wailing Banshee's top picked Hachi, Hachi Ganesh. Two picks that the crew are like kind of known for. So that's unfortunate as Merlin in a lot of trouble uses both relics to try and get away. Does not find it. Armor Wolf does not hit the Phoenix and that's a big deal. The wave will be there and so they will get the Phoenix in time. But now here comes the turnaround as Yorm going deep. He's looking for armor. The Dharma Pillars will not buy him any time. The spit is not good and actually Armor Wolf is still running away. Yorm still hunting though and Bigus in the jungle will potentially find Discordia. He's looking for Krojiro. Yorm still looking. He misses the spit again. We'll find the two. Armor will falls. The base is broken and in tatters. But what can the crew get off of this near deicide? Actually, it might just be a deicide in general. As dummy slick will also fall. But the base, the base, the Titan is in trouble. Someone has to back, and it will be the Thor. But I don't know if he can actually stop this in time. He should. He should stop this in time. Okay. Okay. So it's. I mean, you have to end here. You have to at least break the base because. Wheeling Banshees, yeah, Wheeling Banshees could just go in and end. If they can get Snix when he respawns, mm -hmm. oh, instead, so towers up, though. instead they have to go for, I mean, they have to go for fire is what they have to do. They have to get fire and then hopefully hold the base and just use it to stall is what they need to do. Problem is, I don't know if they should fire the Manticore. We'll see. I think Susano gets here, though. Oh, they got tanky fire giant is, bro. It's Snix. It's all Snix. He does get spotted and he's looking. He has ultimate. It's really early. And Snix might just have to give this up. Cardwell's also on the way. 
He's looking to get in. If he staggers his death too much, it might be trouble. Cardwell is also here. He blinks in. Good Yemuel to buy space. Snakes can no longer get involved, but it's a huge knockup from the fire giant. Who's going to get it? You got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's Cardwell who steals that one. He will pay with his life, but Armor Wolf is here. The ADC is here, and Snakes has a huge flank potential. Thor is not here. They might just have to group and force this fight, but they will not. Armor Wolf on the way. Hits Merlin. Merlin will go in to try and kill off Armor Wolf and trade his life. It's not enough. Snicks finds that one. Storm now in trouble from the Darmic Pillars. And the rest of the squad is now dead. Drunk Diplomat does find Armor Wolf in the end, but it doesn't seem to matter. Yorm will get up into the sky. And Drunk just has to try and get away, and he will walk into the waiting arms of an elephant who misses the three, hits the da hits the one, but it doesn't matter. Drunk should get out here, and he will. Bingus goes up into the sky now. Who's he going to land on? It's going to be a huge target. If he can find one, he does not. He misses the wall as well. Hammers to safety. And now you have to defend three fire giant waves pushing in on all sides. Discordia goes in. They're looking for it. Crojiro uses the Aegis. Sticks with an ultimate to get some space and time. But it's over. And Wailing Banshees go up 1 0. That was a crazy end. That was a crazy end. They had some, uh, had some nuts on them in that game right there. <laughs> that was, I don't know if I would have made that call. I think the call to go for fire was definitely the right call. But I think at some point, Bingus just, just had to abandon the base and just make his way there to try and make an impact on Thor. It's just so tanky, dude. They <laughs> were on it the whole you, time and it's still they, it's not dead. They had to go for it. I don't know. Man. That's, it's tough, bro. Like, it, this is why Marty AC like, feels bad because you draft Marty AC and even with Merlin, you're not shredding the objective when all of them are dead except Susano. Carl had enough time to respawn and teleport over or whatever. Like, that's just, it's, it feels bad. Despite also that, the Thor, the Thor fell off hard. The crew do have a potential to come back in this series, obviously. I mean, yeah, Cardwell, I think, just doesn't save the game. I think the control was obviously in Wailing Banshee's favor at the end there. But Cardwell just, I think, seals the nail into the coffin there and steals away that fire giant just cleanly. Makes it happen. Should have banned Cuckoo into Yorm. This is true. Storm got to pack up the Yem this set. I'm inclined to agree. I think you got to pack up the Marty and the the Yemo, to be honest. Or if you're picking Marty, you slot it in mid and go double ADC because... Not to say the Merlin looked bad, but... I don't know, man. Did not look good. The AC role, at least. You just can't shred objectives. Not able to kill the front line. Garrett isn't that great at Marty when we played him. Unlucky. <clears throat> well, the crew backs against the wall. Can they come back from this 0 1 deficit? The answer is yes, they can. Of course they can. It's my game. Anyone can win the next game. But realistically, can they do it? Well, it's a great question. Is this one or this one I want? All right, here we go, here we go. Picks and bands for game number two here. And it's an insta-ban away for the Susano. Not surprised at all after Snick's performance in game number one. The question is, is Snix truly a one trick or not? I don't know. Set ban away. A Garrett performing on that set. Last time around. A Thor ban as well. Bingus will have to go to something else. So both junglers will have to go for something else. And it's five assassin bans in the top three and a Ganesh ban as well because Storm, they know Storm's going for that pick. And they're like, if you if we're not taking it, you're not taking it. 
And that was Tom fan is so crazy, bro. Yo, I mean, oh, is Storm a one trick confirm? Question mark. Can you play anything oh. else? That's a little disrespectful. I'm gonna, disrespectful. I'm gonna just Stand top, top three Ben Ganesh. Just screenshot so that. Go to OSL General and just say GG. Well, you can't. Well, you can't say that Hydra played Ganesh twice today. Of course I can. Uh, it's Storm's one trick. He, if he can't play Storm uh, Ganesha, it's over. <laughs> it's not. It's not about like, oh blah 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 blah. But all right. Okay. Okay. Jack keeps getting away with it. He just picks Mikey Kakol in every game. Pinsu Pop is molding. He wishes he could pick two gods over and over again. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody make him play something else, please. Please. I know we have to ban Snipes. Oh out. my on. god! I can play more than Ganesha though. This is true. This is true. Bro, you literally have a free ban here. Why are you banning Rafana? <laughs> no way, dude. The problem with this team is they don't play Ravana in their t first picking. Like, why even take first pick at this point? <laughs> that is true. That's so true. You might as well be second pick if you're not going to take Ravana. It feels terrible to top ban Ravana as a first pick. Is banning Snix good? Banning the Sasato is fine, but you're going to ban Ravana Thor and Thor you just played. So why are you banning that pick? Like, I don't know, man. Also, I got his brain dead. I don't know who can't play Ravana right now. Yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty unlucky. Is that what it is? Can they just not play Ravana? Yeah, basically. I mean, that's what it looks like. I mean, you can't tell me your first pick in banning Ravana, your top three. That's that's the biggest we can't play Ravana like statement I've ever seen. <clears throat> I mean, you're banning it, so you think it's good. It's not that you're like playing against it, right? You you know it's good, and you're not picking it. So. And a solo like, Ravana. I mean, Clutch showed he can kind of not really play Jormungandr as well, so it's kind of unlucky to really say and be like, what can you play? It's a Maui lock-in oh. for Dummy Slick, and that's a little surprising. It, definitely an odd pick here, I'm not going to lie. Doesn't, uh, just kind of screams comfort for me of like, hey, like we really want to get a support and maybe not really worry about what they're going to play. Or they think, think Marty is better, either. which has to Dummy be Troll. Pick. No, I think Glarky, they just can't play it. Bruh, so many jungle bands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine jungle bands. This tells me Achilles might be jungle, by the way. It's possible. Like, I don't know. On paper, like <laughs> they should still have the better draft, but like I just I don't I don't know, man. I don't think you're also so. You're playing double ADC into Nike, so like you're, I, you're playing into that one, the god's one strength. Yeah. And Ganesh is banned, so like you don't have a you know free ohm, and it's the two's gone. Uh, they got to pick something to disrupt it. The Nox is still on the table. The, the I guess. Achilles, the Achilles does do that though. The Achilles can stun him and then execute through the shield, which is nice. And they have to pick something to, to stop Nike. This is true. I mean, they they pick double ADC. Of course, they're front to backing. I think Nox would be a great pickup for Storm here, in my in my opinion. I'm I'm inclined to agree. Don't make the mistake and pick Storm Alan doesn't play game. Nox. Well, you know, Storm's God Pool really is showing this set so far. But Wailing Banshee is definitely looking like the top team of uh, the Archon division so far, for sure. They have uh, just shown that despite whatever meta, whatever you think is the best, we will kind of pick our own stuff and then go from there. I just realized there's nine jungle bands. What the hell? Yeah, and Snix is still going to last pick his jungler, despite all that. Band, a Thanatos ban and a Merkle ban in this lobby. I cannot believe what I am seeing, bro. This is What's even open? Right 
Alquang is still available. Uh, Alquang, maybe. Oh, God, what does Snix play? I gotta go look, bro. He Hanbots has been. He's mostly been spamming Susano, so I don't know what he's gonna go to this game. So this should be a support jungle lock in for the crew, unless we do see that Achilles go into the jungle to the jungle. And and if if that is the case, there is still a Yarmungandr available. I didn't hate it last game. Erlong, Erlong is still available. That is a potential possibility. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about Erlong with this composition as it's a Fafnir hover, and I am not a fan of this. This, oh, it does stop Nike. It's it's a, it's a stun, and it's a Hebo jungle for Bingus. That is the potential snatch away from Snix as well. If this man misses, so he's basically saying, I'm going to hit my one every time, because if he ever Fenrir. misses one time on the two, he's screwed. Man gets Fenrir 10th yeah. overall against this composition. Against Hebo, by the way. Oh, oh my... Oh, there's no way. Oh, Cardwell, thank you for the follow. Good luck in your game. Why did we think about playing Hebo? We not banned Fenrir, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Bingus. He's going to have to deal with it. They left the hardest counter pick available to them. Oh, my God. He could have just played out Kwong and he wouldn't have gotten done dirty like that. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary folks alike, let's get ready for game number two. So going into the compositions, obviously, I would favor the... Wailing Banshees, just based solely off of uh, how the last game went and the compositions that they get. Oh. Just excited to see what they can do with this comp. Snix gets a great counter pick against Bingus. Oh, did not get screenshots for game one. Unlucky. Tell me Slick just messaged me said, hey, can you get screenshots for game one? It did spectate. Um, it did spectate, so it'll, they'll be there, I think. They are on the stream VOD. It's mine games, man. Picks Hebo, knowing you got countered. True. Is this the ultimate counter bait? They're like, hey, you're going to play. Fe We're going to play Fenrir. We know you're going to play Fenrir. We don't mm -hmm. care. Our composition, we're going to just you know, dumpster bro, it. He goes brush plate and stone of binding and he 1v1s Fenrir and he cooks him. True. True. He rushes the breastplate of Valor. I'm telling you right now. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Play is right now. He's going to rush Chronos pendant and breastplate. So he has max CDR on Hebo, right? So he's just split splashing every 0.7 seconds. True. He's not taking any damage. And True. The binding, so he's extra tanky with penetration. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I just cooked up his build. You can thank me later. The question, the question is, is Bingus watching? Do you think to be able to uh, cook up that build and listen to that build? And uh, I'm, I'm going to send it to him telepathically. Nice. With my mind. Oh, hey, fam. Drew's food, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Uh, now we play the waiting game still. We are still not in the game yet. No idea why. Sometimes this just happens. Hopefully we will be hopping in shortly. Doesn't If Fafnir doesn't go BT, he dies on cooldown. This is true. Yeah, he probably should go beads, which is fine. I don't actually think you need a... A supportive relic right away for Fafnir. I think he just go beads. Second at relic, he just goes like either he can go frenzy and they you know, if they're not terribly like getting actually trenched, they might be able to just pull fire and fifty fifty it off cooldown, but I don't know, like uh, if I had to guess what happens, Snix drops uh, attack nuke on them in about fifteen minutes and this game's over and at twenty four. Alright, you heard it here first, folks. So she thinks this game is just over. 20 minute mark. 
Me personally, I think this will be a little bit of a closer game. Drunk gets one of his two gods. A Garrett is on the Martikaris this time, something we've been told he is not that great on, so hopefully he can prove us wrong. Armor Wolf once again running it down as Hachiman with a Maui to back him up this time. No Ganesh, no Mickey God Ganesh to uh, carry Armor Wolf this time. This time it's the Maui. And I actually quite like this Maui in terms of uh, how he's going to play the game with his team and his carry and backline. So this is going to be really exciting. And Dummy Slick has uh, very much impressed me as a support for this season of OSL so far. <clears throat> well, the PJ Salt emotes are coming out early. Some salty members in the game. Clutch is going to be rushing what looks like Glad Shield. That's a little... Is is that the build? Is, do you just rush Glad Shield on Achilles? Squoosh. Oh, Squoosh. Sorry, I was muted. Squoosh. Oh, what's up? What's I'm watching the, my sprite game on the sides. Is this the, the build? Do you just rush Glad Shield on Achilles? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I you don't, don't know. know. All right. That's right. No, that's right. I think the last game was Slick's best performance. I mean, he's playing Ganesh, so it's kind of easy to look good. What's, I mean, Storm makes Ganesh look good. You know what I mean? What stance is uh, Clutch starting in? Uh, I assume shirtless. I think he is shirtless. He yeah. is shirtless, yeah. Of course he's shirtless. Why would you not be shirtless? I'm just curious. That's like the only reason why I thought maybe you'd go glad. It's like, I don't know, maybe you want extra prods from your passive to do extra damage to the glass. You'll probably buy it. it. also might be from items. I don't know, man. I... You just can't clear the wave when you do that. Yeah, I don't know. Gotta get Slick shield. credit. Oh, I okay. I am of the proponent that Slick is really good. So I'm not I'm not discrediting Slick. I'm just saying he played Ganesh last game, and so it's it's easy to look good on that character. I still think Slick is really good for the record. I thought I think he as a support has been very impressive this season overall and he's he's looked really good on this team and made he's made Krojiro and Armor Wolves lives very easy. Well, last game we had a double kill for Bingus early on this game before the two minute mark. Storm made Storm look like a Sparta call up. His Yemo was not it. Yeah, but Storm can't play a lot of gods. That's the problem. He didn't get the Ganesh last game. He doesn't have it this game. He's not going to look great. It's just Storm. It's just Storm's like crutch. He doesn't have a God pool. Oh, Bingus getting aggressive. Just splish splashing the damage right now. This is kind of how the early game went in the mid lane early last game. So. I'd be surprised if actually they, it looks like they want to take a fight potentially in their 2v2 is not bad, are the Wailing Banshees. They jump in. Marty Prebeads is to stun on the Hebo. The dash through for the damage. Hebo, 1 HP. Bingus could get murdered on the first kill. The jump. Oh, the knockup isn't enough. No, Sticks finds first blood. It's the turnaround this time compared to last game. And now... Garrett is in a lot of trouble because Snix is back. Does he have the Brutalize? Yes, he does. Snix oh gets off to an early 2-0 start. He's doing his best Bingus impression because that's exactly what Bingus did last game. Now going into this game number two, it is not looking good for the crew. There is a lot that they have to do to make stuff happen now. They so are queue up the bowling theme because it's looking like a nice throw. <laughs> I don't believe it, bro. Man, oh man. Drunk gets pulled and Bingus is here. It looks like Bingus is just gonna try and make something happen in the early game. Sure enough, the jump in. Bingus is here. The bait is good, but is it enough? The horrific is better. And I think Dummy Slick is going to be A-OK -okay despite all that damage and all that rotation. It's not going to matter. They will get this tank buff at the end of the day, do the crew, but... I'm surprised you went horrific first because, I mean, the carpet literally just cleansed the slow. 
I don't think it's about the slow uh, in the late game, though. I think it's going to be about reducing game. the attack speed and the damage out of these two hunters. So what is he going second, really? To just fight going horrific first. Oh, clutch. A lot of trouble. The Nike hits five and clutch dead. And we also have beads on my Lucky. soul inner versus Fenrir. You deserve to get camped. <laughs> that is tough. Clutch falls as well, and that was arguably one of the saving graces. Now the only saving grace really is that duo lane for the crew. Everywhere else has fallen at least once. To answer your question of what he goes second relic, honestly, probably Sunder. It's Sunder or Shell. So both of them are good options. So He's gonna have to go Sunder because if he doesn't go, sh if he didn't go Shell first, it's kind of criminal. Uh, he can go Shell second. I think Horrific I first like, is better. I just think Horrific into Hevo, where you're never actually gonna get the slow value early game, is weird. That's fair. But is he gonna be really like fighting the Hevo early? I think as he will be eventually, but it, if the Hevo's one gank, and the Horrific isn't gonna do anything. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, Snix is here hovering on the left hand side. He's looking. Hey, Garrett's beats are about to come back up, and they are pushed up left heavily. He's spotted on that ward, and yes, the dashes will come through immediately. It's here in the mid lane. Ultimate is forced from a Garrett. And Krojiro now going to play aggressive on the Marty, who beads his very early. No stun, and he gets stunned later on. Snix over the wall. Is he going to go for it? He will not. But instead, Bingus on this left-hand side will look for a potential kill. He needs to get this Hebo rolling, and he's down a level. But I mean, still Banshees, Banshees are just playing so safe, and this could be it. Here goes Snix, the jump in. He's tanking. Beads oh. are not available, and A. Garrett falls. Snix on little HP, but he still gets out okay. Oh, man. It is uh, not looking good for the crew, for sure, in this game number two. They are uh, very behind. And honestly, credit to Krojiro. He just baits a Garrett's beads amazingly well. And now, Krojiro on this right-hand side. No magical protections for this Achilles. And half his HP is just gone like that. Imagine having to upgrade your beads early. Who did that? Is that what that is? I don't, I don't think that's what it is. Who upgraded their beads early? It didn't. It didn't. Oh, good pull. Fafnir should be fine, though. He's very safe, so... Just like that, the backup is called. Nobody but they need to? That's valid. Yeah, but spending 300 gold to upgrade your beads early game when you're already down about a K right now is going to feel terrible. Agreed. But you might just have to bite the bullet, honestly. Oh, good pull. Snix is still hunting. He's got that ultimate available to him any second now. And Clutch does not have beads. Any second and Snix's ulti is up and there they go. Doesn't even need it. Snix gets his third kill of the contest six minutes in. This Fenrir is off to a tear. Just no vision. And Snix just like that. 3-0. Bingus once again on this left hand side trying to make something happen. Just gonna get that tank buff instead. Armor Wolf will secure his purple buff. Dummy Slick looking to go over this wall, looking for that red buff. They are here. He has no ultimate, and that's the. The ult from Marty forced, and the red buff is snatched away for the Wailing Banshees. Left hand side, Armor Wolf does get ganked, and finally Bingus gets something for his team. But is it too little too late? Now Storm has to make sure he gets out to safety because Snix is on the way looking for the counter gank. Mids are secured on the right. He already, he already jumped. Uh, he does have he's ultimate. Right. I don't think he'll go for it, but he is hovering here. He could look for Bingus actually in the jungle who did just use his ultimate. Does have beads, does Bingus though, but no. Instead, Fenrir will just back to safety. Both mid camps go the way of the Wailing Banshees. And this lead is starting to get out of control. It is almost, it is one and a half K. It's not out of control just yet, but I think the first real fight and lead change will be around this beacon, honestly, when it spawns, 12 minute mark. I think that'll be where the big fight breaks out. And honestly, at this stage of the game, Wailing Banshees can just potentially de-aside the crew with how far behind they are.
game should be better to feel better to play late if they get late yes and no there are there are factors on both compositions kind of similar to last game where they both kind of do well in the late game they just both do different things obviously the crew does do better in the late game because i think mages are a little stronger early game compared to hunters right now kind of need to you need less to make more happen if that makes sense Wailing Banshees have a mage. Same because Snix isn't on a 1v9 god. I don't know about that. Actually, speaking of which, Bingus has accumulated a one level lead. I don't know how that happened. But he's there. He's got a level lead. He has just been farming. He has sat back, sat on this left hand side, and the ADC has suffered for it. And Snix on the right. That's a big shutdown. The dive goes horribly wrong. Clutch with that ultimate. And claims that Snix, just a miscommunication by the jungle solo. And Snix, suddenly his, his advantage is gone. Bingus is up two levels because of that. Fight could break out here in mid. They're looking for Krojiro who dashes away. Though Tidal Wave lands and Krojiro now in a lot of trouble. Marty, Maui could be next on the chopping block. He gets knocked up. Stunned in place, tries to jump away to safety, will do so. No, the route is better. Oh, good beats from the Marty. And Hachiman is on the way and on the rotation, but Cardwell is also on a rotation of his own. Flanking heavily, looking for this red buff more than likely. Yes, he's going to pull it. But Bingus is here, and Cardwell does not have any magical protections to speak of just yet. Jumps in, ults, looking for Hebo, who has no ultimate or no beads. Now, and he has to run away to safety. Cardwell does not find the last hit, and Achilles has rotated in. Red buff does go the way of the crew, and Cardwell has to get out to safety. Dummy Silk is there to get him out. With that too, which name is escaping me in this moment, we will go alongside with Dummy Slick because I am curious myself what that two is called. The Mystical Lua. Very nice. Snicks on his own between towers. He is spotted. Jumps onto the Marty who has no beads, gets pulled and ulted by... Oh, good... I don't even know what happened there. Crozero finds that one. A Garrett does fall at the end of the day. And Agni will be back out of the safety. Beacon is spawning soon. And honestly, in my opinion, at this stage now, it can go either way. A few minutes, a few, if you asked me like, you know, a minute ago even, if crew should defend this this beacon at all i would i would have smacked you i've been like hey no they're still behind but they've kind of fought back a little bit the lead is not insurmountable bingus has himself a, a level lead he's gone it's a tier two of that silver breastplate he's going into what is likely a breastplate of valor and the backs are coming through for the crew both adc and jungle back this might be a beacon defense tp available for clutch and he will likely be saving it for that Hardwell does not have his TP. <clears throat> Won't be the end of the world if they give it up. I don't think it'll be the end of the world no matter what team gets it. I just have a feeling based off last game and the way this game has gone is all five players are going to group for this beacon and they are going to fight for it like their lives depend on it, which isn't the play way to play this map or this game. But that's how it's gone so far as Cardwell on the right hand side gets kanked, but nothing happens here. Oh, it is good damage on the Cardwell, nonetheless, from Bingus, who jumps in because Snix is on the rotation, spotted out by a ward. Good ward placement there. Snix is still here, however. He's gonna shove that wave in. Bingus backs. Achilles is still here. Beacon is available. And it's gonna be tough to force off of this one as Agni casts some cooldowns. Good damage on the Agni, actually, and both, both mids take a good chunk of damage there. Armor Wolf will be the first to rotate. Scratch that. It's going to be even. Both ADCs will be here. Achilles has TP'd in. Cardwell going to be splitting right. It is going to be a 4v5 in mid. Ultimate from a Garrett. Doesn't get much value out of that. And Achilles is stunned and horrific. He's kind of slowed down. The damage is slowed down. Can they keep going? Maui locked in place. Stunned and immediately he is dead. The ultimate from Achilles didn't land because he's already dead. Fenrir goes in. Finds just the Fafnir as Bingus is here, and it's a big ultimate onto Snix. Ultimate from Drunk. Can he find the snipes? Does not. Armor Wolf with the mounted archery gets two and has to run away. Nike is here and trying to make the impact, is not able to do so. 
the crew get the gold or the beacon sorry and cardwell jumps in looking for more but will not find it just has that shield available to him so he will do so bomb doesn't land from crow zero what is that a one for nothing overall somebody die i feel like somebody died Stun from nothing, yeah. oh it's an immediate engage on to oh, storm because he no. jumps in but it could it be fine. a bait hachi one HP, Krojiro does find Drunken, that's a very big deal. The ADC is dead, Hachi, can he escape? Martikaris stunned in place, hooked as well. Can he get away? Krojiro just waiting for that dash, does find it. Cardwell cleans that one up. Krojiro has to kite away to safety and Achilles gonna keep running, looking and hunting, gets stunned. No, he does not, good beads from the Agni. Doesn't have dash just yet. He's still getting peeled, Snick's on him now. Achilles just trying to trade out more than likely for the hook and it doesn't matter. Krojiro with that one, 4-1 and on the Agni. Making the impact is Krojiro. And what a bay. Armor Wolf does die at the end of that, but he's back up and ahead to this Gold Fury. Storm the only one available. Can he make the impossible happen with the hammer? Body blocks should be there. And the Wailing Banshee secure the first Gold Fury of the game. I want to not play Fafnir in a minute. <laughs> Hey, my man forgot. <laughs> my man forgot he, he ran out of time. That's tough. <laughs> That's a bit tough. Maui alt should have been there. used there. Unfortunately, shouldn't have been used there. I feel like you can't alt aggressively as Marty in the game state. You, you kind of be out of tower while it's down. These are all valid complaints. In my opinion, he, I just don't think Garrett got a lot of value out of these ultimates at all yet. He, he was like backing up in the ultimate like he was scared but you're out of combat like he missed a lot of his ult because he backed up yeah i agree just kind of troll i feel like you just need to like get value with at least a few shots before you start backing up to safety i mean yeah if you're gonna ult for damage you might as well do the damage part snakes on the hunt looking for clutch he's on this left hand clutch. side has cardwell to jump in cardwell does exactly that pushes him out of the tower and will the tank come through yes cardwell Gonna tank up the tower. Clutch in a lot of trouble. Alts to safety for oh, now. Okay. The squad is not here. Storm picks him up. He pot tosses him back into the tower that's non existent. Clutch is still gonna fall here to Snick Storm. Cannot provide that peel on the Fafnir. He's only a Fafnir. Just a hammer and a disarm. So, the Achilles, I don't think uh, Solos are building P Cloak anymore. Uh, to my knowledge, Ooh. so he's kind of just stunted his Ooh. build, and that's why he just kind of got railed right there. Ooh, you are correct. The P cloak is uh, not a good look. Cardwell's got the flank. He spots a Garrett really late here. A Garrett trying to steal it away. He does not. And now Cardwell's on the dive once again with that shield push. Just gonna keep the Marty at bay for now. That's a good build. You're unaware. Sure. Oh, left hand side drunk. Kills Armor Wolf. It's not a solo kill. Bingus was there, but it's still a good look nonetheless as Wailing Banshees will shove down the mid. They don't maximize the gold because there was a Bastion still there, but you know what? That's okay. Wailing Banshees looking good. Up 4k this game so far. But there is saving grace. Bingus still has that one level lead. He's done a very good job as keeping his team in this game, despite Snick's just turbo ganking side lanes, specifically the right hand side, Clutch, who decided not to go for beads despite being pulled multiple times this game. Clutch has gone for a blink instead because he knows, hey, I just got to get it in there. Problem is, if you get in there and you're just dead, it's kind of just unlucky. Once again, Clutch, probably in trouble here. Going to get ulted. No beads available to him. Gets pushed under tower a couple of times. Damage is still there. The slow as well, but Bingus has arrived. Clutch has no mana to ult away. The carpet, good peel from Bingus to get his mid, his jump, soul laner, excuse me, out of dodge. That was really good carpet. Like, obviously that saves Clutch, but man, that was good carpet. So it was uh, a Sunder pickup for Slick, by the way. Second. That's kind of what we talked about. Unlucky. Full fairy spawning here soon. Wailing Banshees have the Oracle Vision, of course, and are grouped around it. Bingus will likely want to be here for this because he has been integral for his team so far. The 
We're gonna have to make a lot happen. Armor Wolf probably needs to die. Krojiro definitely needs to die. Snix definitely needs to die. Cardwell, you could probably ignore as best you can, but he probably should die as well. But ultimately, it's the Wailing Banshees who have the lead and they have the advantage and they are the ones hungry for this Gold Fury. But Snix could get baited here. The grouping advantage is in the way of the crew right now, but Snix seems to sniff that one out and backs away as Clutch has TP'd in and... We will have another 5v5 this game. Beacon will likely be the first contention point as Cardwell takes a ton of damage here first. He jumps in on a Bingus but takes a lot in return. Left hand side. It's Achilles who gets taught first. He gets hooked in place. And just like that, Clutch is picked. The shell was too late. And now Hevo could be in trouble as well. The slow, the... The, the wave, but it's not enough. Krojiro falls, and the the horse comes in from Hachiman. They're just going to keep chasing it down mid. Clutch just gets caught unaware. He is 2-5 and five on this Achilles, and it has not been a good look. It has not been a Depp Mufin level of performance on this Achilles so far. And Clutch just potentially costs his team a Gold Fury and the Beacon. Just not on the same page are the crew. And you might be asking if you're the crew, did we play with the wrong Sam tonight? The answer is probably, because Clutch has not looked good this game. So if the crew can bring this back miraculously to game number three, do you potentially sub out Clutch? I'm not so sure. Can you do that? Probably, but... It's going to be an interesting talking point in the comms. Though granted, more than likely after this game... There's where you'll have to have the most uh, heated conversations, I think. Wailing Banshees. A roster formed by Cardwell. Very strong roster. I'm four drinks deep. You don't want me? I'm not going to comment on that. But Cardwell Legacy, he puts, he puts this team together. He is the captain, of course. And a strong jungler, a decent ADC, a very good mid laner. And a new up-and-coming support who has proven himself to be one of the better supports in the league, honestly. Dummy Slick has been just working really well with his team. Not making any major mistakes. Has been playing kind of whatever. He's he's taken away the Ganeshas in the early game in the early drafts to, to you know really force Storm onto different picks. He's playing whatever he needs to to make it happen for his team, and he's done exactly that so far. This roster has really worked well together. Should the Banshees go fire? I think they're just gonna wait. They're gonna wait for their next little advantage here. Another fight potentially. And then they'll go fire. If you're the crew, you're really banking on Bingus. A recent pickup for this team. Uh, uh, actually, not even... Uh, sorry, excuse me. I had my story wrong. Bingus, an original member of this team. Roll swapped from ADC to jungle. Drew's food out. Drunk diplomat in. Bingus goes to jungle. And Bingus has been the saving grace for this team in this game so far. It has been a highlight player for their success. So, can Bingus make the impact in this game? to turn this this L so far into a victory as Armorwolf on this left hand side will push the tower down as the fight breaks out Drunk Diplomat is in no man's land gets caught has to go up into the sky can he make something happen more than likely no it's gonna be a look for Armorwolf on the left they're trying to trade out but Armorwolf has that mounted archery just we're on our way to safety jump in from Snix and that forces the ultimate from Achilles the execute is down now and that's a big deal. Armor Wolf still not grouping with his team just yet. Just forcing the split up. And honestly, it's been a good look so far because Snix is like, you know, you're forcing Bingus left and Bingus has been integral for this team. And Bingus not being there, I think, is a very big deal. I, I don't know, man. Drunk just kind of caught in no man's land doing God knows what. And now 22 minutes in, the Fire Giant will be started. Only Storm here to try to defend. Bingus is nowhere here to make it happen. And honestly, if you're Storm, you probably want to get out. He's going to jump in. Alt early. Trying to make it happen. Banshees get it. 
And now it's Storm who will likely pay with his life for jumping in. Slowed by Cardwell. Snicks on him. Cardwell gets it. Storm staggers the death timers. And if this guy once again calls himself the best support in the league, I'm going to lose it. Because this guy is not good and is a Ganesha one trick in my opinion. Based off of tonight's performance. Wailing Banshees, five members with Fire Giant will push down on this right hand side. Tier two falls and they will look towards the tier two in mid. Nine seconds on Storm. Will not have the ultimate, so this should be a free tier two. And we'll see what Wailing Banshees elect to go for after that. Dominant performance for what was supposed to be between the two top teams. It seems like Wailing Banshees are just on a league of their own. People, I believe it was the Storm team was complaining that Wailing Banshees looked like they were the best team last week, despite dropping a game to going Ghost. And Storm was like, actually, we beat, or I don't know if it was Storm or whoever on the crew said, actually, we beat the top team, Kitsune. Obviously, we're the best team in the league. Well, Wailing Banshees out here proving that wrong. They have just looked so clean and so good these last two games. They have picked the crew apart with such ease, identified how they want to play the game, the picks that they want, and it has been so easy for them to look good this set. Tsune were overhyped for weeks, agreed. To be fair, different roster. Uh, for the crew, Clarky, and it doesn't seem to matter because they're the ones who self-proclaim themselves to be better uh, despite having a uh, different roster. I'm not, I'm, I'm doing this for dramatic effect where I just repeat things that they've already said so that I can in trouble for get in trouble for saying things that they've already said. It's just kind of repeating the information that they've already said back to them because what they said originally was quite stupid, but they don't think so. So in hopes that eventually they see this, they understand the point and they realize how foolish they were to make those claims to begin with, hopefully. But, who knows. Uh, Wailing Banshees have to be a little bit careful because they have grouped on the left-hand side and the Titan is actually spawning soon. So, if they wipe here, they won't be able to end the game if Titan starts pushing right. They gotta be a little careful. Left-hand side, the Wailing Banshees. Two members in mid, three members in left. Storm jumps in to try and make something happen. Wave isn't even here yet. Phoenix loses a bit of HP and the Titans have been unleashed. Nike goes in. The big ultimate. Buy some space. Phoenix will likely go down here. Nike taking a ton of damage. Hachiman in No Man's Land. Phoenix does not fall. This could be the turnaround they need. Clutch does not hit the ultimate. Cardwell does finally die though. It's just a one-man ultimate on the half near who gets hooked back in actually because Clutch is already dead and the front line is in tatters. Good stun on the Martikris who gets sundered as well and it's a huge horrific forces both sets of relics from Drunk and the beats from A. Garrett. That's the Latam Phoenix down. And just like that, the base is broken. And now, Wailing Banshees, they can't end the game because the Titan is pushing down right, but they will take all three Phoenixes here. But they cannot end the game. This could be risky. Drunk taking a ton of damage here. Or D Dummy taking a ton of damage here. Gets blinked on by Bingus. Dummy Slick is dead. Bingus could try to make the turnaround play here. He's got ultimate. Does not have blink now. Good knockup. And he's still hunting for armor wolf. A good beads as well. Can he get the ultimate? He does, but it's not enough damage just yet. Doesn't find the knockup. Rama rolls in for the kill on armor. Finds it. Does have the Aegis available. Uses it a little too late. Does fall. A Garrett uses those console mechanics. Doesn't land all those ultimates he needs. Will clean up Krojiro, however. But Fenrir is still hunting. Good hammer to peel. The Fenrir beads is still hunting for Martikaris. Gets it. The shell again. Too late. Storm needs to just smash those relic keys because it's always too late. Ay, ay, ay. Top OSL support, though. Storm doesn't, isn't able to do that, isn't able to keep him alive. Maybe Storm should be looking to self bench. 
But Glarky, you don't understand. Storm is a top OSL support. He said so himself. He's the best. Is he the captain? He is the captain. <clears throat> they did just make a sick pickup. They did. They did make a sick pickup. Oh, no. Dummy Slick, you can't do that. You can't follow because now we know what goes on, Dummy Slick. But thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Fire Giant. Gonna go the way of Wailing Banshees here. On this right-hand side. No, he's cheating. He is cheating. He's actually still playing this game. He's using this game for awareness right now is what he's doing. So we're actually gonna have to go talk to some admins after that. It's not a spoiler, he's just cheating. Well, as the self-proclaimed rat himself, I am uh, gonna be talking to Godsend and Snooze after this game. Dummy Slick, uh, be ready to be banned for a week. Much like uh, the Dr. Dilf himself, but it's okay because in the great spirit of Dr. Dilf, uh, you will likely still get the set win next week. Screenshots in general, I'm on the way. Well, this is the last Phoenix, likely the last fight. Wailing Banshee's pushing on the right, looking for the objective. Hook onto Clutch. They will have to back away. Cardwell on the mid, looking to just pressure them out. All three Phoenixes are gone. Fire minions shoving down mid and left. Snix jumps in. That will be all. They'll play it slow. Good knocker from Bingus and good damage under the Maui. It's not enough. It's a big old hits both frontliners. And there's the engage. Achilles picked up. Achilles likely going to be knocked down. Armor Wolf gets that one. And now Hebo goes in, doesn't find anything with that crushing wave. Knock up onto Marty, but he's not the target. It's the Fafnir instead. No, scratch that. Krojiro gets that one. And just like that, Wailing Banshees at this time at night. Past every other set, the last set of week number four will go up to nothing against the crew and proclaim themselves to be the number one team in the Archon division. That was a good set. Well, kind of a good set. How did Wailing Banshees look the best against the crew? Well, you see, as you can see, It's just too easy when you ban away Ganesha because it's his one trick. I'm gonna say it. Oh no, don't say it, man. All right, I gotta go try and find these screenshots now.